On September 21st, 1989, everyone in Charleston, South Carolina, was either preparing for the approach of Hurricane Hugo or evacuating to escape its arrival. They had no way of knowing that within 10 hours, it would become the worst storm ever recorded in this country. We interrupt this program to bring you a Live 5 weather bulletin. The emergency preparedness is ordering everybody in the low-lying areas of Charleston, the West Ashley area, to get out now. You no longer have a choice. You're being ordered out. So it is a mandatory evacuation. Approaches. There are last-ditch efforts to get everyone and everything that can be moved to safety. This have now been reversed. So there are only lanes leaving Charleston. You now have six lanes leaving My Charleston. My father was really worried about Hugo. I said, what are we going to do? Are we Are going to evacuate or are we going to stay? And my dad said, well, we're going to stay. My husband decided to make preparation for the storm. He should not have been working that hard because he knew he had a hard problem. He was almost finished with the drainage ditch, and he started pulling his chest a little bit. And I said, Daddy, what's wrong? He said, I have a tightness in my chest. Nineteen-year-old Charlotte Stewart convinced her father he needed to rest. We got back into the house, and he started breathing oddly. Mommy! Shirley Stewart brought her husband his heart medicine. We asked him to go to the hospital. He refused to go, but I knew that we had to do something because if the storm came, then we couldn't get to the hospital. We have some information coming in now from the emergency preparedness office. Let's go. Bill McCauley was the deputy public information officer that day. We had all kinds of media there. We had every major network, newspaper, radio, because we had to get the message to the people that there was a major force that was coming and that uh, it could kill them if they did not leave. We have a news release uh, from the shelter people from the American Red Cross. The shelter at Wando High School is filled to capacity. The Stewart women managed to convince Herman he needed to get medical attention. He was in pain, I could tell, but he would always try to hide his pain. Then he started breathing funny, and I touched him, and he collapsed. I was terrified. I was scared to death that my father was going to die. A 13-year-old Keisha remembered the CPR instructions she'd read on a calendar. I didn't know what I was doing, but when he started responding, I knew I was doing something right. I was surprised when I saw Keisha doing CPR. It was the best thing that could have happened in my life because she saved his life. By 4 o'clock this afternoon, the last satellite picture we received, you can see just to the southeast of the Charleston area, there's the eye of the storm, very, very potent storm. And as Storms are rated from Category 1, which is the, the minimal storm, to uh, the most catastrophic storm, which is Category 5. Dennis Clark had prepared the hurricane evacuation plans. We felt that we had well over 100,000 people at risk from the storm. As Hugo neared Charleston, Herman Stewart was admitted to Roper Hospital and put in the intensive care unit. His wife, Shirley, could not stay. It was the most devastating time I've ever had in my life because I was worried about Hugo. I was worried about my husband. And they said I had to leave before the storm started. The hardest part about it was leaving him alone and not being there for him. It's now just a few hours before the hurricane should slam into Charleston and the rest of the low country. A lot Again, of that humor. If you want to leave the Charleston area, please leave now. You cannot delay because shortly it will become too dangerous to leave the Charleston area. Lincoln High School was offered as a shelter based on the fact that the Corps of Engineers study said that it should remain dry up through a Category 4 storm. People were located throughout the school. There were some people in the band room, people in the home economics room, people in the gym, and people in the cafeteria. I was basically there to keep law and order. Hundreds of people left their homes and took refuge at Lincoln High School. At that point, the wind was just rattling, whistling throughout the school. I mean, you could almost hear the school breathing. is now a strong category three hurricane i repeat a strong category three hurricane that means that we will have winds up to 132 miles an hour we believe in county government that it is unsafe for you to travel and transfer some roadways so by 9 p.m it became too dangerous for anyone to go out in the storm point, do not leave where you are
Among the people who had taken shelter at Lincoln High were Deborah Snyder and her family. I have a 16-month-old little girl, and we went on to the school. It was me and my other three sisters, my little nephew and my little niece. We was playing cards, and the light kept blinking off and on. We was having fun, really. It didn't bother me. But when I glanced up, the roof was, like, lifting up and making a lot of racket. Ladies and gentlemen, landfall for Hurricane Hugo is between 12 and 1.30 this evening north of the city of Charleston. It will have surges of between 12 and 18 feet, serious storm surges. Hold where you are. Stay secure. The two-story house go to the second story. I repeat, stay where you are. We do have a Category 4 storm now. Anything you guys can do for a person when that roof falls? No, sir, you just need to be a part of that unit, another part of that house. Here. No, sir, there's no way we can get anybody out of there right now. Oh, when the hurricane finally hit, the calls really started coming in. Nobody does. We had to tell them, you can't leave. You're going to have to stay right there until it's over now. You, know, you don't have a choice. I understand that. It's a very solemn feeling. To not be able to help when that's all, that's what you're committed to doing for the rest of your life. While Helen Moan worked at the 911 center, her seven-year-old son, Darren, was at a shelter with his godmother, listening to the shortwave radio. The children played all kinds of games. They explored the building. And every once in a while, we would all go to the back door and open the door and look out. At Roper Hospital that night, nurse Karen De Lorenzo Thames headed the intensive care unit. In the ICU, we have 14 critically ill patients that we know need to be taken care of. Mr. Stewart was admitted in the afternoon prior to the storm with a diagnosis of a heart attack. I'd say he was unstable at that point. The wind was whistling like I've never heard it before. Transformers were blowing up all over town. It's the most brilliant color aqua I have ever seen. At 9.40, the transmission system feeding Charleston failed. Roper Hospital was without power. But within seconds, its five emergency generators kicked in. In many parts of the hospital, lights were deliberately turned off, so power could be supplied to the areas that needed it most. There was a problem with the generators, with the fuel lines. Evidently, the wind loosened up the fittings enough where we lost suction. We knew we had a problem and we had to do something to resolve it quickly. If there wasn't any power, it could have been very dangerous to the people in these critical care areas. The full fury of the hurricane hit right around midnight when Hugo came ashore with sustained winds of 135 miles an hour. This is six miles inland. We realized someone was going to have to go out there and hand pump diesel fuel to those generators to keep them running. And we had approximately 15, 20 minutes before we ran dry. There wasn't time to say, well, Dave, you go, or Dan, I'll go, or whatever. So Dave and I decided that if we went out there together in one slip, there'd be another guy there to help. We really couldn't see what was going on or what was flying through the air. The velocity of the wind was just unbelievable. We had an extremely hard time. The wind whipping through there was probably 125 or 130 miles an hour. I'd have to pump about 15 minutes, and they'd give me the OK signal. And I'd come back in again, and I thought, well, you know, that wasn't too bad. I'd probably do that three or four times. Little did I know that every time I went out there, it got worse and worse and worse. When we continued. The water came in so fast, like it wasn't ever going to stop. And I heard the people tell their wife and the kids, let's all hold hands. We're going to die together. Let's go down together. 